I'm Nick Filardi. I'm Jason Thielbach. Welcome to the world's second finest podcast. Welcome to the Two Read Pile, where we talk about anything else that we got kicking around that we got to get through. A little bit of comics, a little bit of manga, a little bit of TV, a little movies, any media, books, whatever. Anything we got in our Two Read Pile that we, that we checked out, we want to talk about and celebrate with you. I'm Nick Filardi. I'm with Jason Thielbar. I don't know why I said that. I just introduced you. I don't. That's weird. But yeah. anyway, anyway, this, that's all going to get cut. <laughs> Also, <laughs> there's Amazon affiliate links uh, in the description. So if you want to nab any of the books that we talk about, you can do that very easily from there. It supports the podcast. However, if you get a chance, hit up your local comic shop, get your comics there. We'd prefer it that way. But yeah, if you want to support the pod, Amazon affiliate links are below. And as always, this show is also on YouTube, youtube.com slash Nick Phil, where I put a little bit of art in there with the podcast. So if you want to check that out, it's up there when this comes out. Jason. Nick. What have you been reading? I uh, have been reading, and I, I, I'm going to request a small music stinger here for the, for, for the YouTube. If you could, yeah. um, after I, I introduce this book, if you could just play the first probably uh, 10 seconds of uh, Jawbreaker's Jet Black. Uh, I would love to. YouTube will come to my house and break my kneecaps if I do that. Well, uh, everyone <laughs> load up the amazing song by Jawbreaker off the album Dear You, uh, Jet Black, because the books, volumes one and two so far that I read, were uh, What's the Furthest Place From Here? Oh, nice. Which is uh, the very first my- line of that song and it constantly gets stuck in my head because it's one of my favorite yeah. albums yeah yeah that's been um, on my my pile for a long time I, I i don't even know what it's about hit me with with what it's about well what's the first furthest place from here created by tyler boss and uh matthew rosenberg it's um some dystopian future at like like at some point the world ended and the world ended and all that's left are these families or well gangs of kids huh. and at certain points if you get to a certain age you have to leave like there's not adults allowed in these territories but the gangs are all like different the the families they call themselves the family they're they're all different sometimes have like you know there's um there's the the piggies or the bankers who are like the most powerful one you know they wear uh pig masks and live in an old bank this um, sounds very warriors. Kind of, kind of. Uh, there's uh, the boys in blue who are t- a gang of cops. Yeah. You know, um, there's, you know, a few more sc- scattered around. You learn more about them. The main one, though, are the that, that you follow are. Uh, um, <laughs> my stupid freaking brain. My stupid goddamn brain. It's not the academy. Yes. Jesus Christ. Is that what it is? Yes. Thank you. My <laughs> God. You can leave part of that in if you want. I don't. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to leave like solid 10 minutes of silence as we just yeah. try to Google this one yeah. thing. Yeah. As I'm, as I'm apologizing. So our, the, main, the main gang or family, as they call them in the book, is the academy. And they all live in an old record store. And yeah, these different it's just such a cool world like they, they like they have their own gods because again, this is like after the end of the world. So these, like sure. these they don't know any like they can't even play these records and they can't. Yeah, they, they don't like I don't even know if like how many of the characters are supposed to know how to read or not or how they would learn. Is it, it kind of Lord Lord of the Flies ish? A little bit, yeah, but it's also a bit sci-fi because, like, how they all end up there is these huge, mysterious uh, figures, literally figures, these tall, black, uh, um, skinny figures that they call the strangers. 
you know, okay. so like sometimes a new kid will just show up on some doorstep and they don't know why, but they know that like there are certain places where you're not allowed to go because the strangers will, y- you know, yeah. uh, and it, it revolves around like, it starts with, um, in the Academy, you see this character, Sydney and Sid is, is very obviously pregnant, but like, because it's the end of the world and they're all just kids, they don't know what's wrong with her. Yeah. You know, like they're like fair, fair. Yeah. You know, they're like, like she, why is she getting bigger? <laughs> yeah. And she doesn't even know either. She has no idea sure. like what is going on. You know, it's like oh, that. Man, kind that's of, a good hook. Yeah. It's, it's that kind of world. The, the, the story is great and, and, uh, and compelling and fun, but like, the characters are just immediately just like pull you in. Like, like these two just do such a good job. Like she reminds me so much of like the feel of four kids walking to a bank, you know, like, yeah. Which Rosenberg and boss also did. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and like, it's just, they just have, they seem to have this knack for, uh, for character, you know, Mm -hmm. because even, even like the villains and like the bad people are like, quote unquote you know whatever are, are are so like fleshed out and like distinctive uh personalities you know without being yeah, yeah. Uh, um too kind of overt about it you know what i mean sure i don't know it's just it's just really it just it hit me really hard i i, I had ar- i had already read the first volume a while ago uh and then i saw the second volume uh when i was at sarge's and i was like oh fuck oh. yeah and uh but because it'd been a bit since i read the first one i was like and i remember really liking it you know obviously yeah. I, I love these yeah. guys i love this creative team but like I, so i read like two volumes like you know sunday are and you like, do you think that you're in for like whatever rosenberg and boss like make from now on you're just in? oh oh yeah oh yeah totally yeah, Auto- automatic good? automatic buy oh yeah it totally is well and to and like the stakes as well and just some like brutal shit happens and it's just like hits you like so hard yeah, you know yeah i would kind of maybe put this thriller uh horror adjacent you know yeah. job wise but like it, it just you know some of the emotional like hits are just so mm-hmm. good you know it's just yeah i i can't i can't say uh enough about it it's just a phenomenal book the art is is amazing the whole the whole team there's a there's a scene i just want to give special mention because it it made me giggle both times i saw sure. it um but uh near the end of the first volume there's um all of the families uh go to this like carnival you know which mm-hmm. is the carnival is also one of the families but they travel you know they get sure. to move but they go to this carnival right and of course so there's like rides and games and stuff and there's a booth and the booth uh, is titled uh, "Someone is Kissing the Children." <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, that's uh, a <laughs> very good parody of uh, "Something is Killing the Children." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, that, nice, that's nice. Cute. I'm like, that's really cute. That's really, and they're probably friends too with the people who yeah, made. Yeah, sure. That you know, this is just a little like wink. Like I'm like, yeah. All right, all right. I, I love that. That's shit. very, very good. Yeah, but yeah, but what's the furthest place from here by by Image Comics? I just, I'm I'm on I'm on the hook. Uh, yeah, I might. You're I you're might on actually, the hook for Rosenberg and Boss for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. I might. Hell, I I even thought after I read the uh, second volume, I'm like, shit, I might start buying the floppies of this instead of waiting. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're pulled in, Jason. <laughs> yeah, pulling me back in. They're pulling me back in. Got to start that box at Sarge's. Yeah. So thanks, Boss and Rosenberg. You, you, you set me on the path to get a sub box again. <laughs> what have you been reading? I've been, been reading your um, eyeballs into more Sandman Mystery Theater, of course. Uh, the arc that I read was called Vamps. It, it is the return of Guy Davis. Guy Davis drew the first arc and then yeah. took two arcs off. And then this is the one he returns on. And same my mystery theater is billed as like a Matt Wagner, Guy Davis joint mainly. Yeah. When I read the third arc, there was still no Guy Davis. I started to get a little worried because that's 
that's the ticket that I bought. That's why I'm showing up for this. Like the art's yeah. good. The other artists are great, but it was like, yeah. it was like, oh shit, Guy Davis is back. Yes, give me it, give me it. This arc was excellent. It was maybe the best arc so far of Miss Sandman Mystery Theater. It was about these uh, men who uh, think they're about to have sex and instead are being held down and exsanguinated uh, <laughs> by these women. And uh, the Sandman kind of gets to the bottom of it, puts it all together with the victims and everything. Um, one of the things that I hadn't talked about with Sandman Mystery Theater, and the reason I hadn't talked about it is because this person was like, in every issue but kind of a background character like the the mystery theater books are kind of odd and i didn't fully wrap my head around it until this arc which is they don't really follow wesley like wesley is the sandman yeah but it kind of follows him but it mostly follows this other character diane who is the daughter of the police commissioner who's like re like goes to clubs and like you know hangs out and is like pokes her nose where it shouldn't belong and she's like a little precocious and then she kind of like as the the arc goes um or the whole the whole piece of it like we're in arc 4 and she gets like a little bit more brazen every like situation she's in yeah. and uh she also is like head over heels for wesley but she's like and she's like trying to find her way she's thinking maybe community service you know i don't know but her friends get like uh one of her friends gets like roped into the vamps in general and starts acting weird and she's kind of like what the hell's going on here so she starts doing like her own detective work on the side while the sandman is trying to like investigate the same thing and it tur just turns into like a really just solid arc of like a bunch of revenge. I don't want to spoil it because it's so good. But like, yeah, I for a while there, I was kind of like. I think the first arc, I was like, this is good, but it's like not great. You know, I was I was like, I wish there was more Guy Davis action in it. I wasn't really sure. And then like Guy Davis left. And then we got the yellow face arc that I didn't like. And then we got another arc and I was like, it's starting to get better. But I was like, man, did I maybe I shouldn't have bought this book. And then we got the fourth arc and I was like, yes, I'm in. I'm back in. <laughs> yeah, you said vamps and I had to look it up. But I was like, as I was looking it up, I was like, wait, this wouldn't have been a tie in with this book because there was a vertigo book in the mid 90s. Called vamps? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just looked it up and what I didn't know, and you can, you can cut this if you want, but um, I love the, uh, the D and D actual play show D 20. Yeah. And, and uh, the, the dungeon master for that, uh, Brennan Lee Mug Mulligan, um, mm -hmm. his mom is a science fiction writer, but I forgot that she also wrote comic books and she wrote uh, hmm. vamps. Oh, wild. Like, like I looked it up and on the like, yeah, like on like a it's like, oh, written by Elaine Lee. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, I know. She did like, oh, and she's the mom of. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, All right. yeah, yeah. Was, neat. But yeah, but I was just, but like Vamps was like, yeah, much more modern like that, because from what I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I never read it, but I always remember the promotional stuff and like and I'm like, wait, would they have tied this in with. Wait, a that would have been a, a book that's set in the 30s, <laughs> like. You're right, right. That would have been a no, wild no. tie-in. That would have been a yeah. wild tie-in. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I read that and I enjoyed it. It was really great, especially the ending. And then uh, while I was working, I started watching the show Hellier that hmm. uh, Kevin Mellon recommended to me. It's a, a bunch of, it's like a handful of people trying to investigate. And Jason... Please, please hold all laughter till the end. It's a handful of people investigating goblins coming out of caves. <laughs> it's so stupid, Jason. There's, there's, some of it is very, very good. 
some of it is very, very silly. Like you can tell that these people want to believe so badly that they're like leading each other in like weird places and weird ways, you know, it's, and it's par for the course for anything where they're like, we're investigating supernatural stuff. Cause like they don't find a goblin, but they have to show something. So it's like, what do you, what do you fill your time with? And that's the kind of stuff that I really like. Cause I'm like, okay, like, what are we doing here? You know, this is a reality show. Yes, it's a reality show. It's a real show with real people going to real towns and talking to real rednecks in the middle of Kentucky in order to, like, figure out where goblins are in, like, a town of, like, under a thousand people. It's wild. I mean, hey, if you want to do that with your life and it makes you happy and you have more power to you. Yeah, you're not hurting anybody. I will say... It sounds like I'm poking fun, and I am a little bit. However, I did buy the Mothman Prophecies and a bunch of uh, John Keel books who wrote the Mothman Prophecies back in the day uh, from uh, Audible to listen to while I work. And there's a uh, so they reference a lot of the Mothman Prophecies within their search. Their, Their hypothesis is that there is a network of caves uh, underground in the Kentucky, uh, North Carolina, Tennessee area that, um, which is real. This is a real thing. There is a network of caves down there. Yeah. Yeah. But that the veil is particularly thin there. So things from other dimensions come through the caves and you could go through if you, if you like, you know, resonate in a particular way or whatever. And there's all these like, crazy outlandish things that they do uh have you heard of a god helmet i found out about it through this show not no 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 i have not a god helmet is a helmet with uh strategically placed uh electromagnets on it that hook into a pc and it was made by a couple of professors at a university i forget which i don't have the information on hand right now but they were there. What they were trying to do at that in that um, school was they were trying to simulate a religious experience in your oh, brain. Oh, oh, I okay. I, I, I mean, you know I, about this? Well, I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't know the name specific. I I know about different contraptions that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That people have. So yeah, the idea was you hit the brain with these electromagnetic pulses and it's supposed to stimulate it in a way where you have a religious experience. They claim on Hellier that it also will amplify latent uh, uh, psychic abilities. So to give you an idea of like where we are on this show, this they have one person in a God helmet asking questions to these creatures while they sit in a cave And then another person on a spirit box, which is a device that quickly scrolls through um, like AM channels and stuff in order to like very, very quickly in order to find a frequency that the being can communicate with them in. And so and they and they are also wearing a mask and headphones so they can't hear what the person's asking. So it's it's these two people wearing these devices that are like having a conversation and it's like of course it's like a very broken conversation that like makes kind of sense and you know it's yeah i'm losing myself a little bit in here i'm not here to bring heller to the podcast but what i am here to say is that heller kind of hellier kind of set up me being like i want to read about monsters like Mm. i'm in i'm in the monster mentality yeah, get getting ready for a spooky season. Yeah, I'm getting ready for spooky season. What I actually brought to the pod was Barry Windsor Smith's Monsters. Oh fuck, I still have to read it. It's I'm staring at it right now. I By Fanographics. I, Do you have it? Oh, dude, I bought it like because uh, I love Barry Windsor Smith. I bought it like immediately, yeah. but it just like kind of. I, I I mean, I of course I like I cracked it and just sort of enjoyed the gorgeous. It's Barry Windsor Smith of it all, but I 
Ooh. I can understand. It's intimidating because it's Barry Windsor. Barry Windsor Smith is 74 now. This book took, he worked on on and off uh, over the course of 40 years. Yep. Um, it is uh, basically, it's the first comic that he's released in, I think, 16 years. So this is probably the last comic that Barry Windsor Smith will do. Um, probably. Yeah. Monsters won an Eisner for best graphic novel 2002. Uh, they're all 2022, not 2002. 2022. Let me back up. Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't had it for that long. He won a bunch of Eisners uh, for in 2022. He won for best graphic novel. He won for best letterer. And he also won one for best writer artist. Now, I don't necessarily agree with some of those Eisners. I think the lettering is a little rough in places. And I, I couldn't tell if Barry Windsor Smith was smarter than me or not, because a lot of the lettering kind of reminded me, you know what chick tracks are? Oh, fuck. Yeah. I love chick tracks, yeah. man. So like a lot of the lettering kind of looks like chick tracks. Like it's, it's, you know, very wide balloons with little, little like circle caps kind of thing. Um, the lettering style also looked very like the font looked very much like a chick track and the way that he overlaps balloons and with through panels is a really weird way to read comics. Like I, as a veteran reader, I was like, Oh, this is what he's doing. And then I was reading, but I could see how somebody could get confused as to like which word balloon to read when kind of thing, because he'll start word balloons up top of the panel and then he'll they'll go down to the bottom of the panel and then they'll overlap into the next panel and then they'll finish on the top of the second panel so it's like kind of this like weird roller coaster yeah yeah it can get a little crowded it gets like it, in, very in, very crowded yeah there, in terms there are of how points, you're reading it there are points where there's like 15 like part of okay I thought I, I thought I was going to read this very quickly. It's not a quick read. There are like pages where it's like 15 panels per page and like people. It's mostly word balloons. And there's a lot of pages that are um, uh, a woman uh, writing a diary. So it's like you're barely looking at any art. It's just text, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's all integral to the story. You need it all. So you got to really like strap in for this thing. Like I said, it's an intimidating book. Um, yeah. That said, let's get into what it actually is. Full disclosure. Content warning. We're going to live in domestic abuse for, for a little bit here. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew about, I mean, I know about, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about, so that. just yeah. a heads up. It's a, First 120 pages is about this Nazi, uh, ex-Nazi super soldier program that they're doing off the books here in America in the 60s. And uh, they find this kid. Kid doesn't have any parents. He's uh, doesn't really know how to read or write. Basically, like easy pickings for an experimental super soldier. Yeah. Scoop the kid up. They do the experiment. The kid comes out and he's like kind of a lumpy mess, but he's also like 11 feet tall, like freaking 900 pounds. Like he's huge. And yeah. And when I was reading this, I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to get like a a Hulk story by Barry Windsor Smith with like the serial number shaved off, you know, like this is going to be fucking sick. And then. So 120 pages, we get to the reveal of of this super soldier and he can't really move around that well and they're like carting him out on like a a a forklift and like he can't really fit into pants or anything it's a very sad situation more than like a triumphant like we've made a super soldier it's like what the fuck is this kind of thing yeah yeah so in addition to that there's also the recruiter 
who got him into this mess and he cannot deal with it. Like he kind of like starts to realize what's going on. And he is a uh, black man in the sixties with his family. And there's a little bit, I had a buddy of mine who uh, had read this as well was like, I couldn't get over the way Barry Windsor Smith was writing black people in the sixties. Cause it was like kind of stereotypical. So if you're not really into that, like I can understand if, if you're not, if you're going to bounce off this book, cause there's a lot of that front loaded into this book. It, it kind of tapers off after a while, but yeah. I, I don't have enough experience. Like I'm obviously, I'm not a black man. Like yeah, I didn't yeah. grow up in a black household, you know, like, I don't know what a black household is like behind closed doors, you know, like I don't have that experience. So I can't, especially in the sixties, like I can't say if it was, if Barry Windsor Smith, like did a really great job or if it's a caricature of real people and should have been handed, handled more delicately. It's hard for me to, as a white kid. Yeah. Pass that judgment. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I kind of rolled with it. However, the black man has uh, spiritual powers, which is also like he kind of like falls into the trope of like the magical black man come to save us. You know, that yeah. kind of like trope in media, your legend of Bagger Vance's, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which I feel like hasn't aged super well, but it's like, it's also a very minor part of this book. And um, there's a point where you're like, is this imagined by this person or is this, does he, is he really tapped into this kind of like spirituality? Like kind of left, it leaves it ambiguous until the very end. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, is this just a visual representation of like, Right. What this right. guy what this guy thinks is like really like happening right. or like how how yeah. he's doing it or is it or is it um, real? Yeah, yeah. Is this really happening in this world? Right. Yeah, yeah. So the recruiter eventually uh kind of racked with guilt, decides he's gonna bust out the kid, Bailey. And uh he does that, loses his life in the process. Bailey's out out on the lamb. And and at this point I was like here we go. Hulk action. No. <laughs> we stop and we go back to Bailey's childhood. And his dad goes off to uh, World War II to fight the Nazis. And he comes back absolutely abusive. We, you basically like live in this abuse. You, you, and this is something that uh, he does uh, mechanically, narratively, where he shows you where the abuse is going to end up or where you know like he does this multiple times through the book it's like we're going to end here and here's how we got there and so we end with like this and the book opens with awful abuse and uh and then we get a little more a little more abuse and then and then how that happened guy goes off to war comes back he's he's not doing so hot it's insinuated that maybe he has a Nazi gun that's like haunted. Yeah. All right. But, but like, I felt I, I really hated that moment because Barry Windsor Smith has us just wallowing in like family abuse for like a hundred pages, like 75 pages. And then he's like, hey, maybe it was this gun and then that's the last we hear of the fucking gun and i was like why did you do that like if you're gonna if you're gonna commit commit like come yeah. on yeah but it's stomach turning to read it is a hard read um especially if you're sensitive to any of that kind of stuff yeah uh, that's what that, that's what i uh heard a lot about the book even in like the pre like pre-release like reviews and stuff like that of like you know even among all the praise they were like oh boy <laughs> yeah oh boy <laughs> he paints a picture and it, it feels like it comes from a place where he has like personal experience with it mm -hmm. um yeah 
So that escalates. And then the ramifications of that start to come together in a way where it's like, oh, all of these characters and all of these people culminated into this misery that is centered around Bailey, not only when he was a child, but like as an adult and as this super soldier, quote unquote, that uh, like everybody around him is basically absolutely fucking miserable like the worst misery you can possibly feel on earth basically yeah um yeah so i don't want to give away the ending it ends in like 10 the last 10 pages like really wrap up like basically everything but he does it in a really beautiful way with a lot of characters coming together And you can tell that he was like, I was always meant to be here at the end. And you were supposed to, I'm going to tie everything up and you're going to enjoy it. But to get there, you have to understand like the, the, the it's more about the journey of like, this is what violence does to people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And it's a lot of that. It's a lot of that. And, and uh, you know, Bailey suffered violence and then, you know, the the Nazi who brought this project Prometheus. Um, he was under incredible violence in Nazi Germany, making this project, and then he brings it over here and he's still inflicting the violence. And, yeah. you know, that was a real thing with P- Project Paperclip, where we brought over Nazi scientists and that's how we ended up on the moon. Yep. And it's <laughs> sketchy as shit, Jason. Mm-hmm. So. I do recommend Monsters. <laughs> It's not for the squeamish. You know, it just made me think, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, is what I heard about the, the latest film of uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, where, like, there were people who were like, holy shit, war is bad. You know, like, yeah. that's how, yeah. like, you know, for, and it's like, yeah, man, it is. And apparently there were, like, you know, like, some people, too, who were just, like, I, you know, who couldn't, like, watch the whole thing because it's, like, because, like, the point of the filmmaker was like yeah man and the point of the book too is like yeah this is look at what we do to each other (laughs) right right you know but but like but also like i think probably people make stuff like this because it's like yeah no look at it like look like you're not looking at it that's why it's still happening or that's what you know because like you you don't want to think about this part you know you only want to think about the ending when everyone's happy when the soldiers win when the you know like yeah. the ticker tape is coming down yeah, and the, like the, the sailor kisses the nurse and in, in times square and everybody's yeah. happy you know yeah yeah it's like no 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 it's no yeah it's it's uh it's it's a rough time and i thought it was going to be a little more i don't know superhero y or at least supernatural a little bit, but it was mm. far more grounded than I necessarily thought. Yeah. Um if it were up to me, I would pull the haunted pistol stuff out of there. Uh there's a moment the the haunted pistol moment is like um Bailey's mom is suffering abuse from this guy, his dad, who came back from World War II and is like a fucking mess. And he is not the same person that he you know, when he left, you know, it's, he's, well, he's yeah. irrevocably changed by war. Yeah. And, um, he like steals this Nazi Luger and, uh, keeps it in the, it keeps it in this drawer and like, you know, will put it to his temple in order to like fuck with his wife in, in front of like, while she's making Thanksgiving dinner, it's like real terrible shit. And he puts it in this drawer and because she's receiving all this abuse from him, she wants to like hold the gun just to just to feel like maybe she's in control kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and she starts having this relationship with this police officer who's maybe not what he seems as well, uh, because I think that it's a reaction to this abuse that she's under. And she holds the gun. And then she starts hearing like whispers and stuff. And I'm like, come on. I was like, just have her hold the Luger and then like 
feel something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I I felt like it was a real like after 70 pages of abuse. It's like we're we're pulling back now? Now? Well, do you, do you think do you think you could like stretch it to be like a metaphor for like how it was the gun represents the violence kind of thing well or like if it's like haunted it's like something that he and it quite literally is something that he didn't leave behind from the war y- yeah you know, like possible he, he, he like I, I don't i don't know how to jive that with her hearing it necessarily right. that's the thing you know? but but also like if you want like she hears to, like, it and she gets scared and she puts the gun back in the drawer yeah so, like yeah, like I'm like I'm stretching it, but like if that was like maybe like an intention, it maybe should have been like the idea should have been placed a little further back. Oh, sure. You know, sure. That, yeah, I don't, that's just and the the reason that I feel like it's it's kind of a cop out is because it's like he and there's a lot of vagaries through this thing that eventually get wrapped up, which is why I'm not going to get into the ending, but or the back half of the book. Uh, but I feel like he just wanted to to leave a note at the end of all that violence to be like, hey, was it this guy's fault? And I'm like, fuck, yes, it's that guy's fault. Like you know, he he went to war. He came back changed. And he took it out around, on the people around him. And yeah. like and like it's, a, you know, a tragedy, but it is his fault. And it's not this fucking gun, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's the it's the PTSD. It's not like a, right. It's not a haunted item that's like right. Compelling, yeah, an otherwise good man yeah. to yeah, yeah. Um, the book is drawn beautifully. The paper stock is fucking gorgeous. Like Fantagraphics really pulled out all the stops to like. I think they knew that like this might be the last uh, Barry Windsor Smith book. Yeah, you know. They really wanted to make it something special. Yeah. Well, and Barry Windsor Smith was always one of those guys um, for as far as I can remember, even uh, back in his mainstream like superhero days that like the comics journal crowd, you know, which is fan of graphics was just like all about, even though they could be like quite unkind to like mainstream like people, they were like, no, 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 this guy, you know, like, yeah, but Barry Windsor Smith for the longest time, I just assumed he was from somewhere in Europe because of his style, because of his art style. Uh, he's American. He's, born, he's not. Forest Gate, London, oh. England. He's oh. British. Okay. Why did I think he was American? Maybe you're thinking of Charles Vess, maybe? Is Vess American? Vess is American, but I always knew that. Um, I always get I, him and Charles Vess kind of like swapped in my brain sometimes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. But, but, but yeah, but I just always like, well then you know what that that makes sense that like but he has that like but like it's just a very i wouldn't think i wouldn't think english either you know i would have thought like yeah you know french or like because it just seems like his style just always had that like um sort of like mobius adjacent kind of sure kind of feel i think there's an an ethereal feel to his art too where yeah like he functions um let me back up a little so one of his criticisms barry windsor smith had a criticism of joe kubert when he did uh facts from sarajevo Hmm. where he was like i'm reading facts from sarajevo and it's this emotional story about you know like the war in sarajevo and he's like, and I'm seeing a Joe Kubert explosion and a, a Joe Kubert figure and stuff like that. And he was like, his criticism of it was that for this emotional story, you should have done something different artistically so that yeah. it doesn't look like your Sergeant Rock stuff because that sends the wrong message. But he's also here, like, doing the same thing kind of like yeah, and, and it's yeah. it's like you know you draw the way you draw like that's the way it is you know yeah yeah like it's, it, this is I very mean, much a barry windsor smith book and when i when i was talking about him his art being ethereal what i was saying is that like there's moments in this where the recruiter as a young boy meets this uh 
a white woman that he thinks is an angel. And it's drawn in this gorgeous hatching, this ethereal light. Like there's parts of this book where I'm like Barry Windsor Smith at the top of his game, you know? Yeah. And that's like kind of the stuff where he shines, but it's very much like a, a, like, I couldn't help but think in those moments, like, I'm like, oh, this is Wolverine imagining things as the Weapon X project, like, works on him kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a very, uh, do, do you think, uh, Joe, Joe Cooper was like, well, he, did he pass away? Joe Cooper I think, passed away? I think he's passed away. I can, yeah. I can Google it real quick. Yes, he has passed away. He died uh, August 12th, uh, 2012. He was 85. Yeah, that's what I, th- yeah, because I, I knew he was a bit older, older. Than, yeah. than, anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, But like, yeah, but like, do you think that like Joe Cooper's ghost was like, you know, when this like finally came out because he'd been working on it so long, he'd be like, <laughs> yeah, not so easy, motherfucker, is it? Is it? <laughs> huh? Huh? Maybe, maybe, maybe. But I do, I do love uh, Barry Windsor Smith though like just a lot like his art was like he again was another one of those artists when i was a kid that like i tried so hard to draw like like i copied yeah, so yeah. many and, Barry Windsor and artists Smith. artists in in the 80s for sure like yeah you just didn't see it's like him like bill sinkevich oh, you know like yeah they were doing things in comics that you just didn't see anywhere else it's like really exciting especially at a time in the eighties when like, you know, not everybody was, the world wasn't as connected as it is now. So not everybody saw everything kind of thing. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it's one of those things where like, you know, and I should get back to it, but like for people who haven't done a lot of like figure drawing, like, and even, and Mm. just like, even just straight up, you're sitting in a room, there's a model, you're doing figure drawing, you know, like the, the way he, just just the way the his figures are you know yeah like the, the there's the, like it's really beautiful weight yeah. to, to like every piece of everything he draws yeah but it's also not this like <clears throat> sometimes uh you know you get that like too detailed too static kind of thing because like the the artist hasn't yet learned like exaggeration but like yeah. because like you hear exaggeration and you think it has to be big but it's like no it's like it's like renaissance paintings you know it's like the anatomy and figures in renaissance paintings yeah. there's there's that like subtle but it's there it's not quite real but it it displays yeah. enough and it's so goddamn hard i think, to do I think that. it comes across he is so bold with his cross hatching that i feel like that energy makes makes the figure work feel alive yeah. in a way yeah. that like you don't you don't get in a lot of other artists um yeah i can't say enough good things about the art uh the story is a fucking downer but <laughs> uh if if a, a deep we're we're back to back deep sadness between this and ducks yeah. uh <laughs> if, we put, if we put this one and ducks together it, yeah. that would be the saddest to read pile <laughs> that'll be that'll, that'll be when we go like we, we go real uh we go we go real emo you know yeah yeah but, yeah, but we're, we're not, not quite gonna, there yet yeah but 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 and when i say emo I'm, I'm i'm talking about some like some some deep like early 2000s shit some early 90s some late 90s early 2000s all right i'm talking uh. some midwestern okay oh, man all right because that's my age okay I'm, I'm i'm american football i'm not i'm not the my chemical romance age okay <laughs> nothing no 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 shade on my chemical romance at all <clears throat> but that's the kind of sad we're going to be getting okay i'm talking about some mineral all right <laughs> get some mineral in there so i highly recommend monsters um I totally understand if you don't want to pick it up because of the subject matter. Like I get that because you do wallow in it. Um, Yeah. However, like I was saying up top, I think this is the last book he's going to do. He's an exceptional voice in comics and in art in general. Yeah. And I think that it behooves anyone to pick up anything that he makes. I thought that I was going to, I like finished this and then I was like, 
I need to wash this down by just reading Weapon X. Uh, so I got the issues out to because I, I so I, I have the trade paperback for Weapon X. And then I realized that the trade paperback printed on very nice paper is not how Barry Windsor Smith intended it to be, that he built the color himself to be printed on newsprint. That it's like specifically made for the medium. And so I bought when the lockdown happened and I was still working because I was working on Nightwing, I believe, at the time. And uh, comic stores were really hurting. And I just my three favorite comic stores in the country. I was like, hey, can I just give you a pile of money and like a list and like just fill up the box with whatever the fuck like fits, you know? Yeah. And uh, I I picked up um, uh, Electra Assassin by Bill Sienkiewicz, all the issues, all the issues. And uh, uh, Weapon X, I picked up all the issues for that. So I've been meaning to dive in and reread it uh, in its original format with the letters columns and stuff like that. But I haven't I haven't gotten in there yet. Can can I tell you how much I love that? And I love that love like. It reminds me of like. It's like someone who's like um, an audiophile who was so happy when uh, they re-released uh, on vinyl all of the Beatles albums in mono. Yeah, you know? it's important, Jason. It's because, important. <laughs> be, because they recorded them in mono. And it's not like it doesn't like sound pr- still really good in stereo, but it's just like, yeah, you're right. It's like, no, no, no. They recorded it in mono. They recorded it they, for... Yeah, this, they made it this way for yeah. this specific... St- that's the kind of stuff I feel like as I'm getting older, that's the kind of stuff that I'm really appreciating as like art in general. Yeah. Like, for example, I bought a PVM, like a professional video monitor that's a CRT that is like a top end, like cutting edge technology of 1995 in order to play video games from 1995. Yeah. yeah the yeah. way they were intended to be played. Like, that is the type of madness that like I can get down with for sure. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I absolutely love that shit. I don't, I don't have personally, I don't have the, uh, quite the motivation to do yeah. that, you know? Sure. Um, be- it take it takes a certain, a certain type of madness for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, do, it is, but I do, I do, I do love it. Like I, you know, I yeah. just want I, I just want the books. I'll just get, I'll take the books in any form I can. If I yeah. if, if I can get it in as close to the original, sure. like great. I like, really wish I really wish Marvel would release like a newsprint trade of Weapon X. Like like they did with um uh Absolute Year One, where they had uh it's a it's a slip case that has two hardcovers in it. And then one is like, you know, the, the graphic novel. And then the other one is all of the issues, all four, I think it's four issues um, that David Mazzucchelli drew of Batman Year One on newsprint with the letters columns. Oh, and it's it's so nice to see it restored like that. It just it speaks to a love of the of the craft and uh, of the thing that you make. You know, it's just yeah. like love and care. Oh, that yeah. stuff matters. Oh you know? yeah, yeah. It's like being able to see. Um, it, it's like being able to see a a, a movie in like it's ori- like in a thirty five millimeter print or like whatever it's yeah. like original print. Yeah. You know, like yeah. was like yeah. So it, it, that that's great. That's great. Monsters was the main thing I wanted to bring, but I also wanted to uh, have a quick note that um, around Christmas I went to this uh, comic shop in. Um, I went to a couple comic shops in the Tampa Bay area because I was down there for Christmas and uh, I bought a bunch of single issues and it's very hard for me to remember to read single issues because like I, I'll put them in a box and I won't see them anymore basically. Yeah. yeah. So uh, but I picked up uh, five or six issues of Flinch which was the Vertigo horror anthology. Yeah they just um, recently collected that. Did they really? Yeah, I saw. I, I was. I was on when when I was at Sarge's the other day. I was going back and forth of like, I'm like, should I get that? Should I get this? There was also, oh god, uh, why am I just forgetting the guy's name? But there was a another hardcover collection of 
uh, this European sci-fi uh, artist, J.G. Ballard, I think it is, uh, that huh. like looked awesome that I wanted to, but like, you know, I picked up what I picked up. But yeah, yeah, they just yeah, uh, yeah. Re- That's re-released rad. that. Yeah. Those books are are very fun and they stick true to any anthology, which is no matter who you put on it, some of them are going to hit and some of them are going to miss. Like there's yeah. a Jim Lee story in there that is not great like visually or any like he jim's trying something that is like and i respect it make that swing like he if anyone's earned it like let jim lee do whatever he wants you know yeah yeah but didn't resonate with me particularly well but uh the the book that you brought um what's the furthest place from here yeah reminded me of a frank quietly story in flinch which is uh, about, <laughs> so you got to imagine, Flinch came out in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s-ish. Yeah. Um, so we're starting to see the rise of like pharmaceuticals like in this country, from especially from somebody who's like older than us. They remember like there wasn't a drug commercial on the television every like, you know, minute and a half. Yeah. Uh, so... The story they did, this horror story about these elderly people who uh, get this drug that makes them feel young again. But in doing so, they start to form gangs, like roving gangs of the elderly, (laughs) where they're just like, like fucking and fighting and like, you know, just like there's and and the story doesn't go anywhere. Like, that's the whole story. They're just out there like doing their thing. And like people are trying to live in basements away and like not attract attention from these roving gangs of elderly. And it kind of reminded me of what's the furthest place from here in a weird kind of way. That is amazing. That That is some 2000 AD ass shit right there, though. Yeah, was, for like, sure. Which, for I sure. Mean, which, obviously, which tracks for Frank Quietly. I mean, like, you know, he's Scottish yeah. and yeah. probably yeah. cut his teeth in 2000 AD as well. You know, that. Oh, uh, man. That's great. There's a fantastic Bruce Tim story, which is why I was I was looking through the bin to really? find this Bruce Tim one um, yeah, specifically, one and then I started just pulling some stuff out. Uh, there's uh, early Cliff Chang, uh, Esad Ribic. Uh, wow, I you know, really. I only well, ever bought like one or two issues when it came out, and because it was anthology, yeah. you know, I think I fell prey to. I was like, yeah, huh, whatever, and I just yeah, whatever. There's little short stories. Some of them yeah, are tapered good, off. Them are yeah, the, yeah. The Bruce Tim one is about it's about this um, this guy who's a, a, a violent criminal, uh, mugs people and stuff, and he's he's watching this woman get taken advantage of, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch this shit, you know. And he's like, instead, the woman turns the table on the dude, on this dude, uh, mugs him and murders him. And he's like, this is my kind of girl. And is like, so he starts, he gets in a relationship with them. And their relationship is extremely violent to the to each other and to the world around them. Um, so some like and, natural born killers kind of. Yeah, yeah. But like any relationship the initial spark starts to die down. And before you know it, you're sitting around watching sitcoms with your violent girlfriend. (laughs) And, And so to spice up the marriage, to spice up the marriage, the guy hires a hitman to kill his wife in order to spice up the marriage and do it slow in front of him. Cause he's like, she's going to love this. What he doesn't know is that, the wife also hired the same hitman to murder him in front of her. Oh. And they're like, and they love it, Jason. And the whole thing just ends in blood. And it is drawn by Bruce Tim. So it's like, it's like, it's sexy throughout and cartoony and so fucking violent. So he did a, he did a, a, a he did a, a horror version of Gift of the Magi. Kind of, kind of, it's, dude. It's it's so good that the that Flinch anthology amazing. is worth it for that one little Bruce Tim story, especially because we don't get a whole lot of Bruce Tim comics to begin with, because he's yeah. mostly an animation guy. But yeah, oh man, that story it sticks with you. The I 
I had these issues and then sold them and then rebought them because I could not stop thinking about that Bruce Tim story. That that's awesome. That's awesome. I will say though, I do I do always have a lot of love for anthologies. I do always buy anthologies because there's just even the stories that like aren't great, like sometimes they'll be pretty good. Sometimes you come back to them and you know they're a bit better. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. you know, but like I don't know, like anthologies are um there, there, there should just, there should be more of them because there should be more opportunity absolutely for people to to cut their teeth like someplace because or for have, veterans to just try something new in a safe space where yeah, they don't have not, to do it for six issues yeah you know? or worry about a big property and making a big hit they can just do right a right. weird they story. can just experiment yeah 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 yeah, yeah. fuck yeah to anthologies so that's what I've been reading nice. Gotta read monsters. Gotta read monsters. Gotta read monsters. Gotta read yeah. monsters and then just feel some sadness yeah. about the state of the world and what yeah. we do to each other. Yeah. I was I was thinking about I've been thinking about ducks ever since we talked about it. Um and I was like I was like, man, should I have reached out more to Jason when he was in his mill phase? And I was like, I don't even know if I could do anything. But I I was I I'm very bad personally. I'm very bad at recognizing when people need help. Like I'm a thinker. It takes me time to process, you know? And so yeah. I was like, I was like, man, should I have reached out to Jason more? And I was like, I don't know that I even could do anything really. Like really? Yeah, no, you can. Well, and, and also like, I don't know, like I always, I, I think you can always reach out to other, to anyone more, any of you, like your friends, yeah. you know, like, yeah, not, like there weren't times, like I didn't just like disappear for sure, you know, whatever. Um, but also like, it's, it's one of those things where like, you don't know until like, you're like kind of far out of it, you right. know, like, right. Ev even the, uh, the last job I had before where I, where I was at now, like the last two years of it, like I should have quit. Yeah. Like, but I, I really didn't realize just how badly like i thought for a Until while you get distance it's yeah. hard to see yeah like i thought for a while it was like well yeah they got kind of bad but blah 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 and then like looking back on it more and more i'm like no this was this was awful and there were a lot of people telling you around too that were like who had either worked for or worked with the company here and there but that were like yeah this place has gotten really bad man like it's just been like this was cool yeah. years ago yeah. but this is you know, it's like you just yeah, you well, just don't know when you're mired in it. Yeah. I was thinking about because we were talking about ducks and a lot of that book is about like be aware of how we treat each other kind of thing. And then reading monsters is kind of the same thing because it's like, you know, the kid who becomes the super soldier is not is not the monster, despite him being a monstrosity. Yeah, it's like the monsters are like the Nazi doctor, the abusive dad, the uh, wife who let it happen, the, you know, the recruiter who put him in this mess. You know, like all these people were monsters who like inflicted this violence to everyone around. Them. And I was just like, I think the moral of both books is like, fucking be kind to each other for God's sakes. Yeah, yeah. And and that. Yeah. And that the, and 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 the hey and the hey look the like the look, look, look it's violence begets violence. Look at this. Yeah, yeah like you know, don't, don't. This is how this person ended up here. It's like yeah, all this stuff happened. Yeah. All this stuff. Does you can't happen. just John Wick your way through a war and be fine at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh man, we should we should close this out. We've been running a little long. I. Jason, how can people get in touch with you? They can get in touch with me on the Twitters because it's still there, you know. It's at, still there. At King of Black Acid, also at World Second Finest, at World Second, you know, with the, the, yep. the number two. 
Uh, yeah, episodes and, that get released uh, get posted up there. So if you want a heads up, that's a good place to get it. Yeah, and they can follow you on your link tree. All your links. Yeah, yeah. I got. I added my uh, blue sky. I've been posting a little more over there than Twitter these days, but still kind of cross posting. I saw. I saw a, an image of uh, somebody was like, "Is anybody else sick and tired of posting across like eight social media platforms?" And it was uh, Carmi from the Bear, and he's like, he's like whisking and yelling, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's and he's whisking up like six social media projects while like one burns in the background <laughs> it's like it feels like that it feels like that yeah yeah um yeah you can find me at linktree.com slash nick bill you can find all relevant links there uh come join the discord uh hang out we talk about comics all day and making comics um you can also see what i'm picking up like i post all my pickups and stuff over there so if you're interested in that plus uh i will be at Asheville Beer City Comic Con at the end of September. Nice. So if you want to um, come see me in person, uh, I don't know. I, I guess. I, <laughs> great, Rico, great, great self promotion. Great self promotion. Rico yeah. and I, uh, Rico Renzi, another colorist, uh, 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 popularized for his work on Spider Gwen. Um, he is going to be on the pan- on a panel with me talking about color. And Jason, let me just say. I'm going to say something about color that I haven't said in the thousands of hours of me talking about color on YouTube. (laughs) Certainly, certainly I'll say something completely relevant and revolutionary. So you're not going to want to miss it is all I'm saying. If you're in the area. Well, it's because you've had the practice. So, you know, I've had the practice. Right. I've got all the bullshit out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, All the bullshit's out of the way. I'm ready to just let the bomb drop and I'm going to do it at this con. Come join me. Yeah, get there. Get your tickets. (laughs) Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening.